It's all the grace of Elohim. Romans chapter number 8. 
Sponga Kakulu, Kakulu, all testimonies and exhortations. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We still under the agenda of the Holy Spirit. We want to see the will of the Spirit of God prevail. So with consideration the subject, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is this personality? Who's the Holy Spirit? And we looked at a few definitions about the Holy Spirit, which is the first person or is the third person in the Holy Trinity, is a father to Jesus and mankind. Is the comforter, the teacher, reminder. He's a caster of devils. He's a dweller. He dwells inside the believers. He's the lifter of men and the standard. He is the one who causes us to progress and succeed. He's the liberator, the one who sets free. <laughs> He's a revealer and searcher of divine secrets and mysteries. And then we end it where we say he's the giver of utterance. Let's consider the last two today, number 11. And 12 and then we pray Holy Spirit is a leader and the overseer of the church that's number 11 he's the leader and is the overseer of the church Banda Leonwa Mkulungulu People are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no human being who has shares in the church of Jesus Christ. There is no apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist who has shares in the church of Jesus Christ. It was bought by the blood of Jesus. So no man owns the church. A church is older than any man. It will always outlive any person. A church is owned by Jesus Christ. Hence it's called the church of Jesus Christ. Ministries are only subordinates under the main church. The body is one. There are no two bodies of Jesus Christ. It's only one body of Jesus Christ. And the whole aim of the Holy Spirit is so that eventually the church becomes one. Eventually, the church becomes one. That is the whole aim of the heavens. But it will take maturity for the church to become one. Romans Ephesians chapter number four from verse eleven. Ephesians four Ephesians 
Ephesians 4 from verse 11. We can read there. Yeah. Ephesians 4 verse 11. Yes. So Christ himself gave the apostles. Christ himself. Christ himself. He doesn't delegate someone here. Christ himself. Yeah. Gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. So he's the one that gives all these offices. Apostles, prophets, Christ himself. Now, if Christ does this in his wisdom, no one should eliminate the office that Christ himself ordained. <laughs> uh, no one has more authority to eliminate what Christ has given. So Christ himself gives these five offices or these five gifts. Yeah? There is a reason. It's not for competition amongst the people. Those say our ah, apostles are greater than pastors, pastors are greater than evangelists. No. There is a purpose for the offices. And it says to equip the saints, to equip, to build, to capacitate the saints. So the reason for the offices or for the fivefold is so that the children of God are capacitated. They are built. They are equipped. The work of an apostle is to equip through his own giftings and stream of the spirit. The work of the prophet is to equip through his own giftings and stream of the spirit. The work of the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. All of them are coming to one purpose. Though they may do it differently. But the purpose is one. The gifts are different. But they all must accomplish one purpose. And that is to equip the saints. Now why must the saints be equipped? Yeah? To equip his people for the works of service. For the work of service, yes. So that the body of Christ may be built up. So it's not talking about churches. It's talking about the body. All the churches are part of the body. Hence he will not uh, water it down because there are so many names of so many different churches but it speaks about one solid thing called the body so that <laughs> hey, go see him. come again to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up so that the body of Jesus Christ must be built up. So Jesus wants his body to be built. And if a body is going to be built, every part of the body has to develop. The hands must develop. The feet must develop. The ears must develop. The eyes must develop. Every part of the body has to be built. At the same time, it must all happen in synchrony. So this is why God gives gifts. This is why he appoints men. He calls them into the fivefold. So that the body of Christ is built up. And why should the body be built up? Until we all reach unity in, in the faith. Until we all reach unity in the faith. Your brother learned this one thing. It means that 
without being built we will never be united it takes maturity for people to be united people can never be united until they are built up so the, the ultimate purpose of God in the faith is so that the body unites it comes to one union as the body of Jesus Christ yeah until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attain, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And become mature, you see. So there, there can never be a unity, a union, if the people are not built, if the people don't mature. So God has the body of Christ in South Africa on a scale. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, the God who weigheth the spirits. So the spirits of men have a weight. <laughs> there is a weight of the spirit. And as a person matures in the things of God, the weight of the spirit increases. The person begins to weigh more on the scale of the spirit. So it is the spirit of God that the Lord is using or that is working with the Godhead to develop and to build the church of Jesus Christ. Until the church comes to union, the body of Christ comes to maturity until we all attain a stature of Christ. Romans chapter number 8. Verse number 14. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working in our lives to build us up. us up and the Holy Spirit does not walk or work according to our feelings or emotions <laughs> the Holy Spirit does not work according to emotions and he does not check how we feel before he speaks to us or before he gives us instructions People or the church of Jesus must walk by faith. Faith eliminates emotions and feelings. You know, it, 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 faith eliminates how we feel. It, it, it is not about what we see. No, 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 no. It is about reaching a level in your walk with God where you walk according to what the Holy Spirit is saying no matter how you are feeling. See, if we are going to walk by emotions and feelings, there are people we will not forgive. Because Uma, we are going to listen to how we are feeling and the pain in our hearts. Before we forgive, we will not forgive. And yet the Spirit of God tells us to forgive. Those who trespass against us. As God forgives us. And Jesus became the perfect example on the cross he was still bleeding and yet he said father forgive them he was still in pain and yet he said father forgive them he was still bruised and yet he said father forgive them so he became an example of the will of god that in the will of god we don't walk according to how we are feeling 
but we walk according to the expectation of the law. Romans 8 verse number 14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. What's that? What's the version you're reading? NIV. Okay, read. Let's hear. Romans 8, 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Those who are led. And the scripture is very open. At least it's not saying those who follow. There is a difference between being led and following. A person can be led and not follow. Here he is not saying those who are following are the sons of God. Say that those who have the privilege to be led by the Holy Spirit. Those who are fortunate enough to have promptings of the spirit to have whisperings of the spirit in their heart you know when the spirit of God speaks he speaks to the heart of people so as many as are led by the spirit of God he says these ones are the sons of God the word sons here in Greek is the word huos it's not the same word as certain Zisabu John 1 verse 12. A little pipe, a bonke, a baba mugel, a baba paband, guse babis, a batota, and a gampulungu. It's not the same word. As many or all that received him to them, he gave power to be called the sons of God. The word used in John 1 12 is the word technon. It means somebody who's born biologically by the person. So a person also biologically is a technon, my biological son. So in John 1 verse 12, God is saying everyone, everyone, who receives Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Those are my biological son. You become my biological child. You have the same DNA as me as long as you receive Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so as long as we receive Jesus Christ, we carry the same DNA as God. God is our Father. God is our Father. God is our Father. We have the Father who is sitting upon a throne that is high and lifted up. An eternal Father of lights who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the same DNA as God is inside of us when we receive Jesus Christ when we receive Jesus Christ but Paul is not using the same word here when he talks about sons this word is the word huos it means matured son because my son can be six months old, he's not mature. My son can be two years old, he's a biological son, and yet he's not mature. My son can be ten years old, he's not mature. The Bible here says those who are led by the Spirit are the mature, the sons of God. So you are the lover. A little Bible in nature eagerly awaits. Tumsha ba uyabubula inyoni e amanzi ngapan 
sua mãe enorme e puse se a bula. They are waiting for the manifestation, not of the technon, but of the heroes, the matured sons of God. God is waiting for maturity in the church. And maturity will only come through obedience to the Holy Spirit. If the people of God are not maturing, then the era of Solomon will continue. He says, I saw an error under the sun. I saw servants riding on horses and chariots. And then I saw kings and princes walking on foot. Yamuzotin. Uta ama servants, the slaves. People without Christ are subduing the world. They are subduing finances. They are subduing in the business sector. They are subduing everywhere. And they are riding on horses and chariots. And the children of the king, the princes are walking. The princes are victims of life. And he calls that an error under the sun. So when we mature as a people of God, we begin to dominate as according to the original mandate that we are given. Let us make men in our own image and after our likeness. Let them rule, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky. Let them have dominion over every animal that creepeth upon the earth. We can't fly physically, but we dominate over the owl. It can never be used as an instrument of witchcraft against us because we have dominion over an owl. We have dominion over eagles. We have dominion over snakes. We have dominion over cats. No animal can be used against us because mature sons of God identify, understand, and know their nature and what they are called for and the power that the God of heaven has invested. So we can't be victims. It's not possible. Uh, whenever a power of darkness comes against us, there's no power of darkness that can stand because we carry the power of light. And when power comes against power, a power that contains the lesser must bow. It's maturity. So the Holy Spirit calls us to maturity. See, the church must mature in every sphere of life. One of them Islam, when they are going to build a mosque, I've never heard asking for donations. <clears throat> Four or five guys come together, they put money in the in Christianity we are told to shy away from prospering financial the Bible never said money is the root of all evil never it said the love of money the big difference Love means you can do anything for money. You can even kill. You will lie. You will steal. That's the love of money. But money in itself, when people have it, it, it there's no evil in money. Not at all. Because uh, you have Acts chapter number 8. <clears throat> Holy Spirit is a leader. 
He leads us. Gogula de lam sindisi. Following the Spirit of God. Wherever He is walking, we must follow Him. We choose to follow Him because He sent to lead us. Acts 8, verse number 29. The Holy Ghost. The yeah. Holy Spirit said to Philip. The Holy Spirit said go to Philip. Yeah. Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I? unless someone instructs me. And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. See, thank you so much. <clears throat> Philip was a very great evangelist. He went to a city and the scripture says he preached Christ to them. The Bible says in that city there was a man who bewitched the entire city. Who targeted the whole city of a lawyer. <laughs> and the Bible they were saying this man has the great power of God. Because the people could not distinguish or differentiate between the power of God and the power of witchcraft. Like the same mistake people make today they think the power of Sangomas is the power of God. No, 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 no. There has to be a separation between the power of the Most High and the power of witches and wizards. So when, when Philip came, the Bible says he preached Christ to the city. And the power of God transformed the life of even Simon. Simon, the one who was bewitching the whole entire city. That guy was serious, man. How can you bewitch the whole city? Find the good mundu tagata in Pretoria, Yonke, in Arcadia, in Sunnyside, in Central, in the West, in the North. The entire city. That guy was serious in the powers of witchcraft. God, do we bless God? For the evangelist Philip. Because when a person preaches Christ to a people, the powers of witchcraft are broken. The powers get broken. And the Bible says he saw the miracles that were done by God through the hand of this Philip. <laughs> and uh, he, 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 I, I like the fact that he saw this power and as I power his mistake would now be Uti Atin Tengseleli Lamanda Lawa Wain and Wapet. And then the apostles answered him because after Philip preached. And the city was transformed. Apostles needed to come as the governments of the church. The giftings were different here. The evangelist was the forerunner. He goes and he preaches Christ to the city. After he has preached Christ, 
he will inform the apostles and they hear of the works and the miracles God has done in the city. And the Bible says the apostles themselves now came down to the city so that they pray with the people and the Holy Spirit falls on the people. Because it's not enough for people to be saved and born again. After salvation, people must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. A person will never walk the walk of Christianity without the Holy Spirit. He's a need. It is compulsory that every believer is baptized with the Holy Ghost. Aye, aye, aye. It's a compulsory thing. If somebody is born again, they must hunger and thirst for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, we have a dry church when we have a people without the Spirit. It's not enough to know the scriptures, the verses, and you have no Holy Spirit. You will become a Pharisee who is very far to see. Because the letter kills. The letter kill it. Pharisees know the scriptures very well. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They know it off by heart. But they don't have the spirit. The Bible says the letter kills. But the spirit gives life. What people will receive as life is the spirit of God. have a judgmental church a church full of criticism because there's no spirit to give life letter kills the spirit gives life Bible says now here <clears throat> apostles came first forward Philip in the 29th verse the Bible says the spirit said unto Philip so the spirit has a mouth the spirit speaks. He's the one who instructs. The spirit said to Philip. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. So Philip went to preach to a man. Because the spirit said. Acts 10 verse 19. The Holy Spirit is very, is very, very important. He reminded me about Ubabu Bemo. Now I've listened to his tapes before he went home to glory. And he said something there in the church, Ubabu Bemo. He said, without the Holy Spirit, you guys will not be able to lead this church. The Holy Spirit will choose himself people that will lead this church. This is a church of the Spirit and it has to be led by the Spirit. Governor, it's very wonderful to be led by the Spirit because he will never say, I don't like this person. <laughs> he will make you greet people you don't like natural. He will make you assist people you will never assist natural. The Holy Spirit. He will make you give to people you would have never thought you can give to. He will make you speak to people you would have never thought you would speak to. That's the Holy Spirit. Even if you are told in this family we don't speak to that family. <laughs> And when you are on your way, as you are passing every day, you don't want to speak to them. And the Holy Spirit say, greeting. They quarrel inside. But they said, we don't speak to these people. And then the Holy Spirit will lead you in the way that he wants you to go. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> Verse 19, Acts 10. He's a leader. Holy Spirit is a leader. He's the overseer of the church, the Holy Spirit. We are safe when we are in a church that is led by the Holy Spirit. 
Yes, we are saved. But when the church is led by the will of men in their carnality, we will have so many problems. I tell you, many, many problems. It is only a place that is led by the Spirit that is safe. Yes, you can read that. Acts 10 verse 19. Yes. While Peter was still thinking about the vision. He was still thinking about a vision. People of the Spirit get visions. <laughs> Yes, spiritual people see visions. And they spend time to think about that communication. What is God saying to me? What is God saying to me? While Peter thought of the vision, yeah? The Spirit said to him, Simon, Three men are looking for you. The Spirit said to him, Simon gives him the number. Three men. It's not guesswork. It's prophecy. I know South Africa, we fight against the prophetic office. It's details. I go see how. I think I get laughing. Your prophet Ephanano Elijah. He, he had a serious level of relationship and information coming from God. <clears throat> and sorry, and we love Eliak. He even caused the prophets of Baal to be beheaded. Then Jezebel came after him. Jezebel to kill Elijah the prophet because a spirit of Jezebel does not like a genuine prophet in a high dimension who's able to overcome the prophets of darkness see a sincere prophet or a mature prophet has the capacity to withstand and to conquer prophets of darkness. It is a spirit of Jezebel that kills prophets. Yes, a Jezebelic spirit is a spirit that kills prophets. See, let to a prophet, we need to investigate it as a people and as a nation. Because the prophets are the eyes of the body. They see far distances for the body. And if we fight against or we kill prophets, we will be blind guides of the blind. Prophet is a very important office according to God. Jesus did not cancel the prophetic office. But when he went on high, the Bible says he gave apostles and prophets. So the office is not cancelled. It's not cancelled. I'm going to deeper on another day. But there are details. You are going to, even if you check at Jesus' prophetic ministry, Uchesu, Nabamulandela, and was it Philip or Thomas? I think a bonnet is cut to send me a punch for slap as peace and a cow. It's not guesswork. Eh? Eh, eh, when the Lord appears to Paul, he tells his minister, the Ananias, go to a street called Straight, and you shall find a man, Besum Nigikama, his name is Paul, which was Saul. These are details that the Spirit of God is giving because He does not want Him to guess. This is a God. Amen. When God calls the prophet Moses, Moses, Moses. Oh, 
Agala si kamala kei no Moses. Ya laz. Wai kulukula mbisa ne kamaga bin foot. Asi ye gelele. Ani kola pom just highlighting something. I'm about to pray shortly. So we usually fight against things that we have not come to understand. Yeah? Verse 19, was something from there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, The Spirit said to him, This is what I want. The Spirit speaks. The Spirit said to him. The Spirit said to him. You see, if the church follows what the Spirit says, the church will be at a further distance than where the church is. Because church listens to the media. Church listens to friends. Church listens to neighbors. The church never asks for the opinion of the Holy Spirit. What is the Spirit saying about this matter? What is the Spirit saying about our church? What is the Spirit saying about the body of Christ? The Spirit said to him, that's what we need. We need the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the heroes, the matured sons. Mature. Maturity only comes when we listen to the Spirit. Acts 11 verse 12 or when we are led by the spirit he speaks people can lie to you you know my Holy Spirit helps you in many things because when somebody wants to separate two people he will bring a lie and instead of believing a lie and adopting someone to be an enemy, find out what the Spirit is saying. And you find many times the Spirit speaks to you because you lose your peace. You don't have peace inside. You can feel that something is wrong. Though you don't know or you are not really sure what exactly is wrong. But the Holy Spirit is telling you there is something that is not right about the thing that you are doing. You can feel it inside. Something is not right about the way you are treating this person. Something is not right. The Holy Spirit tells you inside your spirit. You can feel it. But many times we ignore the Holy Spirit. We don't listen to the Holy Spirit. And he is the one who was sent to lead us. Even when you need to choose between two jobs. When you need to choose between uh, two different proposals. It is the Holy Spirit that will lead you. It's the Holy Spirit that will help you. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Let's read today. Acts 11 verse 12. Yeah. The Spirit told me. The Spirit told me. This language needs to come back in the body of Christ. I'm not talking about people who hear their feelings. Talking about people who hear the Spirit. Because so many people leave churches. And they say the spirit told them to leave. And yet they leave because they are offended. They are not leaving because the spirit said. There are so many decisions people make. And they fake it being the spirit. And yet it wasn't the Holy Spirit. But there needs to come a time. Or this is a time that has come again. Where the people of God need to go back to listening to the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the Spirit said to me. Yeah? The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. Yeah. These six, this six brothers also went with me. And 
we entered the man's house. See, he's able to give you comfort and also discomfort when you are going with people you are not supposed to go with. See, Paul, no, this is Peter, was afraid to go with this man. And the Holy Spirit said to him, no, go with them. You can travel. He's able to tell you this taxi, something is not right. Get off. Don't get on this bus. Don't get on this. Don't go with these people. Don't walk with them. And you're gonna, when you don't feel peace in your heart about the decision you are making, don't continue with your decision. Take a time and an opportunity to go here clearly what the Holy Spirit wants to communicate to you. Don't go with this man. Don't attend this place. Don't attend this party. Don't go to this section. He is able to tell you. Peter, go with this man. 16 verse 7 acts go with this man then we will be saved as the children of God we will be safe we will be safe Shahate Mosel we will be safe if we listen and learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. This voice will keep your life safe. This voice. At 16 verse 7. It will make you not go to the wrong places. It will separate you from the wrong friends. It will separate you from wrong business endeavors. This voice. This voice will keep and save your life. The voice of the Holy Spirit. It's always in line with the nature of God and Jesus Christ. Voice of the Spirit will never contradict the nature of God. You know, people lie sometimes. Even ministers or pastors would lie. Say, the Lord said, I must divorce this wife. Can you see? The Lord said, I must divorce my wife and get married to this lady from the choir. And they claim it's from the Holy Spirit. But the nature of the Spirit will not contradict God's nature. Verse 7. Acts 16 verse 7. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter they tried to enter. They tried to enter. They tried to enter. That's what Bethnia. Yeah. But the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. But the Spirit of Jesus will not allow them to. He never permitted them. So we must never jump what the Spirit is permitting us and not permitting us to do. As Valela, number 12, the Holy Spirit is a helper. Romans 8, 26. Let's close here. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. 
we Holy Spirit is there to help us in our weaknesses, yeah? We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. As Valena, the Holy Spirit is a help, is here to help us in our weaknesses. So he becomes a supporting structure to our weakness. Where we are weak, the Spirit will strengthen us. The Holy Ghost is going to strengthen us. The Bible says we know not what to pray for as we are. So what he gives us the correct and accurate things to pray for. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. Is here to strengthen us. We are not helpless. To strengthen us. In our weaknesses. To help us. In our weaknesses. Wherever we are insufficient and weak. The Holy Spirit is there. To help us. Let's rise to our feet. We have a helper, which is the sweet Holy Spirit, the Spirit without measure, the Spirit without measure, the Spirit without measure. Holy Spirit is there to help us. He's there to speak to us. He's there to direct us. Is there to show us the way to progress. Is there to show us the way to rise. The Holy Spirit is there for us. Whenever people are far and we are left alone, the Spirit is right there. Where people are not, where nobody is, the Spirit is there. Let's lift our voices and pray. Let's lift our voices and pray in the next five minutes. What you Holy Spirit, I'm open to you. I'm open to receive your help, to receive your guidance, to receive your leadership, to receive your direction. Kaya lebunda silabai. Shabala sukan 